This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read and recorded by Betsy Bush, Marquette, Michigan, June 2006. Good Things to Eat, as Suggested by Rufus, by Rufus Estes. Section 17. Ice Cream and Sherbets. Baltimore Ice Cream. Two quarts of strawberries, two cups of granulated sugar, half cup powdered sugar, one pint cream, about two spoonfuls of vanilla, half cup chopped nuts. Heat the berries and sugar together, when cool, mix other ingredients and freeze. Black Currant Ice Cream Stew one cupful black currants five minutes. Then press through a fine sieve. Add a cupful rich syrup and a cupful thick cream. Beat well, then freeze. When stiff, pack in an ornamental mold, close over, and pack in ice and salt. When ready to serve, turn out on a low glass dish, garnish with crystallized cherries and leaves of angelica. Frozen Ice Cook one cup of rice in boiling salted water twelve minutes. Drain and put it in the double boiler, one quart milk, one cup sugar, and one salt spoon salt. Cook till soft then rub through a sieve. Scald one pint of cream and mix with it the beaten yolks of four eggs. Cook about two minutes or until the eggs are scalding hot. Then stir this into the rice. Add more sugar if needed and one tablespoonful vanilla. Chill and pack firmly in the freezer or round the mold. Turn out and ornament the top with fresh pineapple cut in crescent pieces or with quartered peaches, and serve a fresh fruit syrup sauce with the cream. Fruit Ice Three lemons, three oranges, three bananas, three cups sugar, three pints cold water. By pressing juice from orange and lemons, strain well, peel banana, rub through strainer into the fruit juice. Add the sugar, then the water, Stir until the sugar is dissolved. Pour into freezer. The ice that is used should be pounded until fine, and the right kind of salt should be used. Ice cream with maple sauce. Scald one quart of cream, add one half cup of sugar, a bit of salt, and when cold, freeze as usual, first flavoring with vanilla or extract of ginger. Reduce some pure maple syrup by boiling until quite thick. Stir into it some sliced pecans or walnuts, and serve hot with each portion of the cream. Pineapple Cream Two cups of water, one cup of sugar. Boil fifteen minutes. Let cool. Add one can grated pineapple. Freeze to mush. Fold in one half pint of whipped cream. Let stand an hour but longer time is better. Vanilla Ice Cream Put two cups of milk in a double boiler, add a pinch of soda, and scald. Beat four eggs light with two cups of sugar. Pour the hot milk on slowly, stirring all the time. Turn back into double boiler and cook until a smooth custard is formed. Cool and flavor strongly with vanilla because freezing destroys some of the strength of flavoring. Stir in a pint of sweet cream and freeze. Cranberry Sherbet This is often used at a Thanksgiving course dinner to serve after the roast. To make it, boil a quart of cranberries with two cupfuls of water until soft. Add two cupfuls sugar. Stir until dissolved. Let cool. Add the juice of one or two lemons and freeze. This may be sweeter if desired. Serve in sherbet glasses. Currant Sherbet Mash ripe red currants well and strain the juice. 
To two cups of the juice add two cups of sugar, two cups of water, and bring to boiling point. Cook a few minutes and skim well. Then pour while hot slowly onto the whites of two eggs beaten stiff. Beat a few minutes, cool, and freeze. Lemon Ginger Sherbet This is made the same as the lemon with the addition of four ounces of candied ginger cut in fine bits and added to the syrup with the grated yellow rind of a lemon. Boil until clear, add lemon juice and a little more of the rind, and proceed as with the ice. Lemon Sherbet Put two cups of sugar into four cups of water and cook five minutes after it begins to boil. Add one half level tablespoon of gelatin soaked in a tablespoon of cold water for fifteen minutes. Stir one cup of lemon juice and freeze. Pineapple Sorbet Peel and cut up a small sugar loaf pineapple and let it stand in a cool place overnight with a pint of sugar added to it. An earthen jar is best for holding the pineapple, whose acid properties forbid its standing in tin. In the morning, strain, pressing out as much of the juice as possible. Add to this a pint of water and the grated rind of an orange. Boil ten minutes. Add the juice of one lemon and two oranges. Freeze about fifteen minutes until of a smooth, even, cream-like texture and serve after the meat course at dinner. If you desire a granite, which is frozen as hard as ice cream, but should be of a rough grained consistency, set the mixture away packed in ice and let it remain there for two or three hours. Scrape the frozen part occasionally from the sides of the can and stir long enough to mix the ice with the mass, but not long enough to make it creamy. Serve in a cup made of the half-skin of an orange with a pulp scraped out. Tea Sherbet Make a quart of fine-flavored tea in the usual way. Pour off, sweeten to taste, add the juice of half a lemon and the fine shredded peel, and freeze. Glace de Gourmet Make a custard of one pint milk, six egg yolks, one cup sugar, and a few grains of salt. Strain and add one pint cream, one cup almonds, blanched, cooked in caramel, cooled and pounded, and one tablespoon vanilla. Whip one pint heavy cream and add one half pound powdered sugar, one tablespoon of rum, one teaspoon of vanilla, and one fourth pound of macaroons broken in small pieces. Freeze the first mixture and put in a brick mold. Cover with second mixture, then repeat. Pack in salt and ice, using two parts crushed ice to one part rock salt, and let stand two hours. Remove from mold and garnish with macaroons in brandy. Maple Parfait Beat four eggs slightly in a double boiler. Pour in one cup of hot maple syrup, stirring all the time. Cook until thick, cool, and add one pint of thick cream beaten stiff. Pour into a mold and pack in equal parts of ice and salt. Let stand three hours. Pineapple Parfait Cook for five minutes over the fire one cup granulated sugar and a quarter cup of water. Beat the yolks of six eggs until lemon-colored and thick. Then add the syrup, little by little, constantly beating. Cook in a double boiler until the custard coats the spoon. Then strain and beat until cold. Add two cupfuls of pineapple pulp pressed through a sieve and fold in a pint of cream whipped stiff. Pack and bury in the ice and salt mixture. Strawberry Parfait Hull, wash, and drain some sweet strawberries. Press through a strainer enough to give about two-thirds of a cup of pulp. Cook together in a graniteware saucepan, one cupful granulated sugar, and half a cup of water until it spins a thread. Do not stir while cooking. 
whip two whites of eggs stiff, and then pour the hot syrup over them, and continue beating them until the mixture is cold. As it thickens, add the crushed berries, a spoonful at a time. Have ready a pint of cream whipped to a solid froth. Stir lightly into the egg and berry mixture. Then pack into a covered mold and bury in ice and salt. Equal proportions. Leaving it for several hours. Violet Parfait This is made the same as white parfait, using one-third cup of grape juice instead of the boiling water, and adding half a cup of grape juice and the juice of half a lemon to the cream before beating. Vanilla Parfait Cook a half cup each sugar and water over the fire until it threads. Do not stir after the sugar has dissolved. Beat the whites of three eggs until very stiff. Pour the syrup slowly over it, beating constantly. Flavor with vanilla, and when cold, fold in a pint of cream whipped stiff. Pour into a mold and pack. End of section 17「This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Catherine Fitz, Davis, California. Good Things to Eat, as Suggested by Rufus, by Rufus Estes. Section 18. Preserves, Pickles, and Relish. Cherry Pickles Stem, but do not pit, large ripe cherries. Put into a jar and cover with a syrup made from two cups of sugar, two cups of vinegar, and a rounding teaspoon each of ground cloves and cinnamon cooked together for five minutes. Let stand two days, pour off the vinegar, reheat, and pour over the cherries, then seal. Chili Sauce Peel and slice six large ripe tomatoes. Add four onions chopped fine, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup of salt, four cups of vinegar, and two teaspoons each of ginger and cloves, and one half teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Cook together one hour and seal in small glass jars. Cold catsup. Cut four quarts of tomatoes fine. Add one cup of chopped onion, one cup of nasturtium seeds that have been cut fine, one cup of freshly grated horseradish, three large stalks of celery chopped, one cup of whole mustard seeds, one half cup of salt, one tablespoonful each of black pepper, cloves, and cinnamon, a tablespoon of mace, one half cup of sugar, and four quarts of vinegar. Mix all well together, and put in jars or bottles. It needs no cooking, but must stand several weeks to ripen. Creole Sauce Scald and peel twenty-four tomatoes. Remove the seeds from green peppers, and cut the pulp and four onions fine. Shred one ounce dried ginger. Mix and add four tablespoons each of sugar and salt, three cups of vinegar, and one half pound seedless raisins. Boil slowly three hours, then put away in wide-mouthed bottles. Gingered Green Tomatoes To one peck small green tomatoes, allow eight onions. Slice all together, and sprinkle with one cupful of salt. Let them stand twenty-four hours, then drain and cover with fresh water. Make a strong ginger tea, allowing one quart of boiling water. To a pound of bruised ginger root. Let it simmer gently for twenty minutes until the strength of the ginger is extracted. Scald the chopped tomatoes in this. Drain. Mix together one ounce ground ginger, two tablespoonfuls black pepper, two teaspoonfuls ground cloves, a quarter pound white mustard seed, one half cupful ground mustard, one ounce allspice, three ounces celery seed, and three pounds brown sugar. Now put the sliced onions and tomatoes in a kettle, with sugar and spices in alternate layers, 
and pour over them enough white wine vinegar to cover well. Cook the pickle until tender, then pack in jars and seal. Green Tomato Mince To two quarts chopped apples, greenings are best, allow two quarts chopped green tomatoes, one pound each seeded raisins and cleaned currants, one half nutmeg, one teaspoonful of cinnamon, one half teaspoonful ground cloves, six cups granulated sugar, and a cupful and a half of cider vinegar. Boil slowly three or four hours, and can. Pick a lily. Allow to one gallon sliced green tomatoes, one pint grated horseradish, eleven ounces brown sugar, two tablespoons each of fine salt and ground mustard. Put the tomatoes in a large stone crock, sprinkle the salt over them, and let stand overnight with a slight press on top. In the morning, add to the tomatoes and let stand several weeks until it has formed its own vinegar. Always keep the pickle under the liquor and have it in a cool place. Pepper Relish Chop fine a small head of white cabbage, six large green peppers, and a nice bunch of celery. Put in a large bowl and sprinkle with a half cup of salt. Mix well, cover, and let stand overnight. Next morning, drain and mix in two tablespoons of mustard seed, and pack in a stone jar. Put in a porcelain kettle three pints of vinegar, two tablespoons sugar, one tablespoon each of whole cloves, allspice, and whole pepper, a clove of garlic, and one onion, minced. Simmer gently twenty minutes. Strain and pour boiling hot over the vegetables. When cold, cover and keep in a cool place. Tomato Catsup This catsup has a good relish on account of the onion in it. Wash ripe tomatoes, cut them in slices, and cook slowly for one hour. Press through a sieve to take out the seeds and skin. To one quart of this pulp and juice, add one tablespoon of cinnamon, one of black pepper, and one of mustard, one teaspoon of cayenne, one half cup of salt, and two onions chopped fine. Simmer two and one half hours, then add two cups of vinegar. Cook an hour longer. Put in bottles and seal. Tomato Chutney Cut up and peel twelve large tomatoes, and to them add six onions chopped fine, one cup of vinegar, one cup of sugar, a handful of finely chopped raisins, salt to taste, a half teaspoonful of cayenne, and a half teaspoon of white pepper. Boil one and one-half hours, and bottle or put in stone jars. Vegetable Relish Use two quarts each of cooked and finely chopped beets and cabbage. Add four cups sugar, two tablespoons salt, one tablespoon black pepper, a half tablespoon cayenne, a cup of grated horseradish, and enough cold vinegar to cover. Bottle in glass jars and keep in a cool place. Apple and Grape Jelly Pull the grapes off the stems of six large bunches. Put them in a preserving kettle. Just cover with water. Pare and slice six large fall pippin apples. Put them with the grapes. When boiled soft, strain through a flannel bag. To a pint of juice, allow three-quarters of a pound of sugar. Boil the juice fifteen minutes. Skim and add the sugar, which has been heated. Boil ten or fifteen minutes. This will fill three jelly glasses. Black Currant Jelly this is one of the best old-fashioned remedies for sore throats, while a teaspoonful of it, dissolved into a tumbler of cold water, affords a refreshing fever drink or family beverage on a hot day. Stem large ripe black currants, and after washing, put into the preserving kettle, allowing a cupful of water to each quart of fruit. This is necessary because the black currant is drier than the red or white. Mash with a wooden spoon or pestle. Then cover and cook until the currants have reached the boiling point and are soft. Turn into a jelly bag and drain without squeezing. To each pint of the juice, allow a half pound loaf of sugar. Stir until well mixed, then cook just ten minutes from the time it commences to boil. Overcooking makes it tough and stringy. Pour in sterilized glasses, and when cold, cover with paraffin. Canned Pineapple Pare the pineapple, 
and carefully remove the eyes with a sharp-pointed silver knife. Chop or grate, or shred it with a fork, rejecting the core. Weigh, and to every pound of fruit allow a half pound of sugar. Put all together in the preserving kettle. Bring quickly to boiling, skim, and remove at once. Put into jars, and fill to overflowing with syrup, and seal. Cherry Preserves Select large red cherries, stem and stone them, and save the juice. Weigh the fruit and an equal amount of sugar. Sprinkle the sugar over the cherries, and let stand six hours. Then put into a preserving kettle. Add the juice, and heat slowly. Simmer until the cherries are clear, and skim carefully several times. Seal in jars, and keep in a cool, dark place. Cranberry Conserve to three and one-half pounds cranberries, add three pounds sugar, one pound seeded raisins, and four oranges cut in small pieces after peeling. Cook gently about twenty minutes. Take from the fire, add one pound walnut meats, and cool. Cherry Jelly The juice of cherries does not make a firm jelly without the addition of gelatin. This means that it will not keep, but must be eaten soon after making. But if a soft jelly will satisfy, it can be made, and kept like other jellies, without gelatin. To make this jelly, crush ripe cherries and cook until soft, with just enough water to keep from burning. Strain and measure, to each cup of juice allow a cup of sugar. Simmer the juice ten minutes, heat the sugar, and drop into the boiling juice. In a few minutes a soft jelly will form. Cranberry Mold this is an extremely pretty way of serving cranberries in individual molds. Wash a quart of cranberries, and put in a porcelain or granite saucepan. Sprinkle over the top of the berries two cupfuls of sugar, and on top of the sugar pour one cupful cold water. Set over the fire and cook slowly. When the berries break into a boil, cover just a few moments, not long or the skins will burst. Then uncover and cook until tender. Do not strain, but pour at once into small china molds. This gives a rich, dark-looking mold that is not too acid and preserves the individuality of the fruit. If you wish to use some of the cranberries in lieu of maraschino cherries, take up some of the most perfect berries before they have cooked too tender, using a darning needle or a clean hat-pin to impale them. Spread on an oiled plate, and set in warming oven or a sunny window until candied. Currant and Raspberry Jelly Some of the finest jellies and jams are made from raspberries, combined with currants. For jelly, use two-thirds of currant juice to one-third raspberry juice, and finish in the usual way. Fig Preserves Take the figs when nearly ripe, and cut across the top in the form of a cross. Cover with strong salted water and let stand three days, changing the water every day. At the end of this time, cover with fresh water, adding a few grape or fig leaves to color, and cook until quite green. Then put again in cold water, changing twice daily, and leave three days longer. Add a pound granulated sugar to each pound figs. Cook a few moments, take from the fire, and set aside for two days. Add more sugar to make sweet, with sliced and boiled lemon or ginger root to flavor, and cook until tender and thick. Green Grape Marmalade if, as often happens, there are many unripened grapes still on the vines and frost threatens, gather them all and try this green grape marmalade. Take one gallon stemmed green grapes, wash, drain, and put on to cook in a porcelain kettle with one pint of water. Cook until soft, rub through a sieve, measure and add an equal amount of sugar to the pulp. Boil hard twenty-five minutes, watching closely that it does not burn. Then pour into jars or glasses. When cold, cover with melted paraffin, the same as for jelly. Green tomatoes canned for pies. To fifteen pounds round green tomatoes, sliced thin, allow nine pounds granulated sugar and a quarter pound ginger, washed, scraped, and cut very thin. And four lemons, scrubbed and sliced thin, removing all seeds. Put this mixture over the fire with a pint of water and cook about half an hour, taking care the contents of the kettle do not scorch. Turn into sterilized glass jars, and seal air tight. 
a tablespoonful of cinnamon, and a half tablespoon each of cloves and allspice, may be added to the sauce while cooking, if desired. Pear and Blueberry Preserves Pick over and wash two quarts of blueberries. Add water to nearly cover, and stew them for half an hour. Mash them well. When all are broken, turn into a bowl covered with cheesecloth. Drain well, and when cool, squeeze out all the juice. Put the blueberry juice on to boil. Add one pint of sugar to each pint of juice, and remove all scum. Allow one quart of sliced pears to one pint of juice. Use hard pears not suitable for canning. Cook them in the syrup, turning over often, and when soft and transparent, skim them out into the jars. Boil down the syrup, and strain over the fruit. Fill to overflowing, and seal. Preserved Currants Weigh seven pounds of currants before picking over, then stem them and throw out all that are not perfect. Put seven pounds of sugar with three pints of currant juice, and boil three minutes. Add the currants, one pound of seeded raisins, and cook all twenty minutes. Seal in small jars. Preserved Strawberries The following method for preserving strawberries is highly recommended. Weigh the berries, and allow an equal amount of sugar. As two cups weigh a pound, the sugar can be measured. Put the sugar into the preserving kettle, with enough cold water to moisten it, but not enough to make it a liquid. Set the kettle on the back of the range, and when the sugar has entirely dissolved, lay in the fruit and heat. As soon as it boils, skim and cook five minutes. Do not stir or mash the berries. Now spread them around on deep platters or enameled pans, and cover with panes of window glass. Set in the sun, and the syrup will gradually thicken. Turn into small jars and seal. Rhubarb Jam Add to each pound of rhubarb, cut without peeling, a pound of sugar and one lemon. Pare the yellow peel from the lemon, taking care to get none of the bitter white pith. Slice the pulp of the lemon in an earthen bowl, discarding the seeds. Put the rhubarb into the bowl with the sugar and lemon. Cover and stand away in a cool place overnight. In the morning, turn into the preserving kettle. Simmer gently three-quarters of an hour or until thick. Take from the fire, cool a little, and pour into jars. Spiced Crab Apples Wash the crab apples. Cut out the blossom's end with a silver knife. To four pounds of fruit, take two pounds of sugar, one pint of vinegar, one heaping teaspoon each of broken cinnamon, cassia buds, and allspice. Add one scant tablespoon whole cloves. Tie the spices in a thin bag and boil with the vinegar and sugar five minutes. Skim them. Add the apples and simmer slowly until tender, which will take about ten or fifteen minutes. Skim out the apples, putting them in a large bowl or jar. Boil the sugar five minutes longer and pour over the fruit. Next day, drain off the syrup, heat to the boiling point, and pour again over the apples. Do this for the next two days, then bottle and seal while hot. Spiced Crab Apple Jelly With crab apples still on hand, a nice spiced jelly can be made to serve with meats. Cook the apples without peeling until tender. Strain through a jelly bag. Add vinegar to taste with cloves and cinnamon. Cook twenty minutes. Add an equal quantity of sugar that has been heated in the oven. Boil five minutes. Skim and turn in glasses. Spiced Ripe Tomato Peel ripe tomatoes and weigh. For each seven pounds, allow two cups of vinegar, seven cups of sugar, one ounce of whole allspice, the same of stick of cinnamon, and one half ounce of whole cloves. Cook the tomatoes half an hour or until soft, cutting to pieces while cooking. Add the vinegar, sugar, and spices tied in a muslin bag. Cook until thick like marmalade. Serve with cold meats. Tomato Figs Scald eight pounds of yellow tomatoes, and remove the skins. Pack them in layers with an equal weight of sugar. After twenty-four hours, drain off the juice and simmer five minutes. Add the tomatoes and boil until clear. Remove the fruit with a skimmer, and harden in the sun while you boil down the syrup until thick. Pack jars two-thirds full of the tomatoes. 
Pour the syrup over and seal. Add the juice of four lemons, two ounces of green ginger root tied up in a bag, and the parboiled yellow rind of the lemons to the juice when boiling down. Wild Grape Butter If the wild frost grapes are used, take them after the frost has ripened them. Stem and mash, then mix with an equal quantity of stewed and mashed apple. Rub the mixture through a sieve. Add half as much sugar as there is pulp, and cook until thick, being careful that it does not burn. It is a good idea to set preserves and fruit butters in the oven with the door ajar to finish cooking, as there is then much less danger of burning or spattering. Yellow Tomato Preserves Allow a pound sugar to each pound tomatoes, and half cup of water to each pound fruit. Cover the tomatoes with boiling water, then skim. Make a syrup with the sugar, and when boiling, skim and add the tomatoes. Have ready a sliced lemon that has been cooked in boiling water, and a little sliced ginger. Add to the tomatoes. Cook until the tomatoes are clear. Remove, pack in jars, cook the syrup until thick, pour over, and seal. Mincemeat 1 peck sour apples, 3 pounds boiled beef, 2 pounds suet, 1 quart canned cherries, 1 quart grape juice, 1 pint cider, 1 pint apple butter, 1 glass orange marmalade, half pound candied orange peel, half pound citron, 2 pounds currants, 2 pounds raisins, 2 tablespoonfuls salt. Put all together and boil up well. This may be canned for future use. End of section 18. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Good Things to Eat as Suggested by Rufus by Rufus Estes Section 19 Soufflés and Fillings for Cakes Soufflés Asparagus souffle. Only very tender asparagus should be used. Cut it fine and boil tender in salted water. Add the well-beaten yolks of four eggs, one tablespoonful of soft butter, a saltspoon of salt, and a little pepper. Then fold in the stiffly beaten whites of eggs and bake in a steady oven. Canned asparagus can be substituted for fresh. Cabbage Souffle Chop a solid white head of cabbage and cook in salted water until tender. Drain and place in a butter dish in layers with a sprinkling of grated cheese between. Mix two tablespoonfuls each of flour and butter. Add one cupful of rich milk, the beaten yolks of two eggs, and a saltspoon of salt and mustard. Stir over the fire until it boils. Then add the stiffly beaten whites of eggs. Pour over the cabbage and bake for half an hour. Cheese Souffle Mix together one half cup bread crumbs, a quarter teaspoon salt, a half teaspoon full mustard, and a dash of cayenne. Add a tablespoonful butter, a cup and a half milk, and cook over hot water. When heated, remove. Add, while hot, two cups grated cheese and the well-beaten yolks of three eggs. Cool. When ready to bake, add the beaten whites of four eggs and a cup of whipped cream. Fill individual cups half full, set in a pan of hot water, and bake fifteen minutes in a quick oven. Corn Souffle To one pint of sweet grated corn, canned corn, Drain and run through a food chopper, which may be used. Add the well-beaten yolks of two eggs, one pint of sweet milk, one small teaspoonful of salt, one and one-half 
tablespoons full of sugar and the stiffly beaten whites of the eggs. Mix well and bake in a buttered casserole or ramequins for forty minutes. Guernsey Cheese Souffle Pin a narrow folded paper, thoroughly buttered on the inside, around six or eight ramekins, and butter the ramekins thoroughly. Melt two tablespoonfuls butter, and in it cook two tablespoonfuls of flour, and a quarter teaspoonful each of salt and paprika. When the mixture looks frothy, stir in half a cup of milk and stir until boiling. Then add four ounces grated cheese and the beaten yolks of three eggs. Lastly, fold in the stiffly whipped whites of three eggs. Put the mixture into the ramekins, letting it come up to the paper or nearly to the top of the dishes. Set the ramekins on many folds of paper in a dish, pour in boiling water to half full, and let bake in a moderate oven until the mixture is well puffed up and firm to the touch. Remove the buttered paper, set the ramekins in place, and serve at once. A green vegetable salad seasoned with French dressing and a brown cracker may accompany the dish. Souffle of Carrots Boil the carrots and mash them fine. Add a little sugar to taste, a pinch of salt, a spoonful of flour, and a good lump of butter the well-beaten yolks of four eggs, and lastly fold in the stiffly beaten whites. Bake in a quick oven in the dish in which it may be served. Tomato Souffle Stew three cupfuls of tomato down to two. Add seasoning to taste and six eggs, the whites beaten stiff, and bake for ten or fifteen minutes, or until set. Serve as soon as done. Fillings for Cakes Coffee Cream for Charlotte and Eclair Flavor one pint of rich thick cream with one-fourth cup of black coffee and one teaspoon of lemon. Add about half a cup of sugar. Chill and whip it until thick enough to stand. Pour it into molds lined with thin sponge cake or lady fingers. Fill them level and ornament the top with some of the cream forced through a tube. Filling For the filling, scald one cup of milk with three level tablespoons of ground coffee and let stand where it will be hot but not to boil for five minutes. Strain Add one half cup of sugar, three level tablespoons of flour, and a pinch of salt. Cook in a double boiler fifteen minutes. Add one beaten egg and cook two minutes, stirring to keep smooth. Cool and add one quarter teaspoon of vanilla flavoring. Fill the cream cakes and cover with cream beaten thick, sweetened with powdered sugar, and flavored with a few drops of vanilla. Filling for cake. Soak a level tablespoon of gelatin in one tablespoon of cold water for half an hour. Add one tablespoon of boiling water and stir. Beat one pint of cream stiff. Then beat in the soaked gelatin. Add powdered sugar to make sweet and a small teaspoon of vanilla flavoring or enough to suit the taste. Put this filling in thick layers between the cakes and cover the top one with a white icing. Fig or date frosting. These frostings are excellent to use upon any kind of cake, but as they are rather rich in themselves, they seem better suited for light white cake. If figs are preferred, they should be chopped fine. If dates, the stones and as much as possible of the white lining should be removed, and then they should be chopped fine. For a good sized loaf of cake, baked in two layers, use a scant quarter of a pound of either the chopped dates or figs, put into a double boiler or saucepan with a very little boiling water, just enough to make the mass pliable. Let them stand in heat while the syrup is boiling. For this, two cups of fine granulated sugar and a 
half cup of boiling water are required. Boil without stirring them till the syrup, taken upon the spoon or skewer, will thread. Do not allow it to boil too hard at first. When the sugar is thoroughly melted, move the saucepan to a hotter part of the stove so that it may boil more vigorously. Have ready the whites of two eggs beaten dry. Now to them add the fig or date paste, and pour the boiling syrup in a fine stream over the two, beating all the time. Beat occasionally while cooling, and when thoroughly cold, add one teaspoonful of lemon extract, and it is ready for use. These frostings may be a trifle sticky the day they are made, especially if the syrup is not boiled very long, but the stickiness disappears by the second day, even if kept in a stone jar. Lemon Jelly Grate two lemons, add the juice, one cup of white sugar, one large spoonful of butter, and the yolks of three eggs. Stir constantly over the fire until it jellies. When cold, spread between cakes. Maple Icing Scrape half a pound of maple sugar and melt. Add two tablespoons of boiling water. While hot, pour over the cake. Be sure to melt the sugar before adding the water. Mocha Filling and Icing A rich but much-liked filling for small cakes is made by boiling one cup of sugar and one-half cup of very strong or very black coffee together until the syrup will thread. In the meantime, wash one cup of sweet butter in cold water to take out all the salt. Put in a piece of cheesecloth and pat it until all the moisture is dried out. Beat until creamy, adding slowly the beaten yolk of one egg and the syrup. Spread this filling between layer cakes, but it is more often used to pipe over the top of small cakes. Orange Filling one half cup of sugar, two and one half level tablespoons flour, grated rind of one half orange, one third cup of orange juice, one tablespoon lemon juice, one egg beaten slightly, one teaspoon melted butter. Mix the ingredients and cook in a double boiler for twelve minutes, stirring constantly. Cool before using. End of Soufflés and Fillings for Cakes Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California, Summer 2006 for LibriVox Section 20 of Good Things to Eat as Suggested by Rufus This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Good Things to Eat, as Suggested by Rufus By Rufus Estes Section 20 Desserts, Sauces for Puddings, and Beverages Desserts Apples Stuffed with Dates Core large, slightly acid apples, and fill with stoned dates. Pour over them equal parts of sugar and water boiled together. Baste the apples frequently while baking. Serve as a dessert at dinner or luncheon. Apple sponge pudding. One cup of sifted pastry flour, and sift it with one level teaspoon of baking powder. Beat the yolks of three eggs until light-colored, add one cup of sugar, and the juice of one lemon. Fold in the stiffly beaten whites of the three eggs, and then the flour. Spread the batter thinly on a large, shallow pan, and bake about twenty minutes in a moderate oven. Turn out of the pan, trim off any hard edges, spread with stewed, sweetened, and flavored apples, and roll up at once like a jelly roll. Serve with a liquid sauce, or 
a syrup made from sugar and water. Apricot Kisses Beat the whites of two eggs until very light and still. Flavor with one-half teaspoon vanilla, and then carefully fold in one cup of fine granulated sugar. Lay a sheet of paraffin paper over the bottom of a large baking pan, and drop the mixture on the paper, in any size you wish, from one teaspoon to two tablespoons. Have them some distance apart, so they will not run together. Bake them in a very moderate oven, and be careful to bake sufficiently, say, forty-five minutes. They should be only delicately colored, and yet dry all through. When done, remove to a platter, and break the top in. Remove a little of the inside, and fill pulp of sifted peaches, sweetened and mixed with equal parts of whipped cream. Sprinkle pistachio nuts over the top, and serve fancy cakes. Baked Custard Beat four eggs, whites and yolks together lightly, and add a quart of milk, four tablespoons sugar, a pinch of salt, and flavoring. Bake in stoneware cups, or a shallow bowl, set in a pan of water. Baked Bananas, Puerto Rican fashion. Select rather green bananas, put them, without removing the skins, into hot ashes, or a very hot oven, and bake until the skins burst open. Send to the table in a folded napkin. The skins help hold in the heat, and are not to be removed until the moment of eating. Serve plenty of butter with them. Banana and Lemon Jelly Cream Soak one half box of gelatin in one cup of cold water. Shave the rind of one lemon, using none of the white, and steep it with one square inch stick of cinnamon in one pint of boiling water, ten minutes. Add the soaked gelatin, one cup of sugar, and three-fourths of a cup of lemon juice, and, when dissolved, strain into shallow dishes. When cold, cut it in dice, or break it up with a fork, and put it in a glass dish in layers with spiced bananas. Pour a cold boiled custard over them, and cover with a meringue. Brown the meringue on a plate, and slip it off over the custard. Custard Pudding Line a baking dish with slices of sponge cake. Make a boiled custard with four cups of milk and the yolks of five eggs, one half cup of sugar, and flavored with vanilla. Pour the custard into the baking dish. Beat the whites of the eggs to a stiff froth with one half cup of powdered sugar and spread over the top. Set in a very slow oven to brown slightly. Custard Souffle Mix one-fourth cup of sugar, one cup flour, and one cup of cold milk. Stir till it thickens. Add one-fourth cup of butter. Cool. Stir in the beaten yolks of four eggs, and then the stiffly beaten whites. Turn into a buttered shallow dish. Set in a pan of hot water, and bake in a moderate oven half an hour. Serve at once. Fig and Rhubarb Wash two bunches of rhubarb, and cut into inch pieces without peeling. Put into a boiler, with a cupful sugar and four or five figs cut in inch pieces. Put on the cover, and cook over hot water, until the rhubarb is tender, and the syrup is rich, and jelly-like in consistency. Raisins are nice, cooked in rhubarb the same way. If preferred, and you are to have a hot oven anyway, put the rhubarb and figs or raisins in a stone pot. Cover closely, and bake in the oven until jellied. Cold Rhubarb Dessert Peel tender stalks, and cut enough into half-inch pieces to measure two cups. Cook with one cup of water, the grated rind from a large orange, and two cups of sugar. Do not stir while cooking, but lift from the range now and then to prevent burning. When soft, but not broken, 
Add two and one-half teaspoons of gelatin, soaked fifteen minutes, in one-half cup of cold water. Stir with a fork just enough to mix and pour all into a large mold. When formed, unmold, and serve with cream. German Dessert Beat two eggs and a pinch of salt, add two cupfuls of milk, and pour into a deep plate. Soak slices of bread in this, one at a time until softened, but not enough to break. Melt a rounding tablespoon of butter in a pan, and in this brown the bread on both sides. Serve with an orange pudding sauce, or any kind of liquid sauce preferred. Lemon Sponge Soak one half box of gelatin in one half cup of cold water. Add the juice of four lemons to one cup of sugar, then the beaten yolks of four eggs. Add two cups of cold water, and bring it to a boiling point. Stir in the soaked gelatin, and strain into a large bowl set in a pan of ice. Beat now and then until it begins to harden. Then add the unbeaten whites of four eggs, and beat continuously until the sponge is light and firm. Fill into molds before the sponge is too hard to form into the shape of the mold. Mosaic Jelly One and one-half cups of milk, two level tablespoons sugar, rind of one-half lemon, one-half bay leaf, one level tablespoon granulated gelatin, one-fourth cup of water, yolks, two eggs. Scald the milk with the sugar, lemon rind, and bay leaf, then add the gelatin soaked in water for twenty minutes. Stir until dissolved, and strain the hot mixture gradually into the egg yolks slightly beaten. Return to double boiler, and stir until thickened. Remove from fire, and color one half of the mixture either pink or green, and turn each half into a shallow pan wet with cold water. When cold, Cut into squares or oblongs. Line a mold with lemon jelly and garnish with the colored pieces. Add the remaining jelly, chill thoroughly, and serve on a platter garnished with whipped cream. Pineapple Bavarian Cream Grate enough pineapple to make two cups. Soak two level teaspoons of gelatin in one-half cup cold water for twenty minutes. Heat the pineapple to the scalding point. Add the soaked gelatin and stir until dissolved. Then add one-third cup sugar. Stir and fold in three cups of beaten cream. Turn into molds and chill. Scalloped Apple Measure two even cupfuls of fine bread crumbs and pour over them one quarter cup of melted butter. Mix two rounding tablespoons of sugar, with the grated yellow rind, and the juice of one lemon, and four gratings of nutmeg. Butter a baking dish, scatter in some crumbs, put in one pint of pared, cored, and sliced apples, scatter on one half of the seasoning, another pint of apples, the remainder of the seasoning, and cover with the last of the crumbs. Put a cover on the dish and bake twenty minutes. Uncover and bake twenty minutes longer. Spanish Cream Put one and two-thirds teaspoons of gelatin into one-third cup of cold water. Heat two cups of milk in a double boiler. Add the yolks of two eggs, beaten with one-half cup of sugar until light, and, when the custard thickens, Take from stove and set in a pan of cold water. Beat the whites of two eggs until stiff, and dissolve the soaked gelatin in three-quarters cup of boiling water. When the custard is cool, add a teaspoon of vanilla, the strained gelatin, and the whites of the eggs, beaten stiff. Stir all together lightly and turn into a mold. STEAMED PUDDING Beat one half cup of butter with one cup of sugar to a cream. Add two beaten eggs, 
and cup of flour sifted with one teaspoon each of cinnamon and soda, two cups of bread crumbs soaked in one cup of sour milk. Add one cup of chopped and seeded raisins and one half cup of chopped dates. Steam two hours and serve with whipped cream. Strawberry Sarabande Whip a cupful thick cream until very stiff, then fold carefully into it a pint of fresh berries, cut in small pieces with a silver knife. Have ready a tablespoonful gelatin soaked in a quarter cup cold water for half an hour, then dissolved by setting the cup containing it in hot water. Add by degrees to the berries and cream whipping it in so that it will not string. Add three tablespoonfuls powdered sugar, and when it stiffens turn into a cold mold and set on the ice. When ready to serve, turn out onto a pretty dessert platter. Walnut Sunday. Put one cone of vanilla ice cream in a sherbet cup, or better yet, in a champagne glass, and sprinkle with minced walnuts. Yorkshire Pudding Take an equal number of eggs and tablespoonful of sifted flour, and when the eggs are well beaten, mix them in with the flour, add some salt, and a little grated nutmeg. Then pour in as much new milk as will make a batter of the consistency of cream. Stir the batter with a fork well for ten minutes, and then put it in at once into a baking tin which must be very hot, containing a couple of tablespoons of hot drippings. Set the pudding in oven to bake, or before the fire, under the roasting meat. When ready to serve, cut the pudding into squares, and send to the table on a separate dish. Apple Pudding Butter a pudding dish and line it with slices of toasted stale bread, buttered and wet with milk. Over these put a thick layer of peeled, cored, and sliced tart apples, and sprinkle generously with granulated sugar and cinnamon or nutmeg. Over these put a cover of more toast, buttered, moistened, and sprinkled with sugar. Cover with a plate and bake for two hours in a moderate oven, taking off the plate toward the last that the top may brown. Serve with maple or other syrup for sauce. Apple Pudding Four cups flour, one level teaspoon salt, six level teaspoons baking powder, four level tablespoons butter, two cups milk, two cups finely chopped apple, one half cup butter, two cups sugar, one and one half quarts water. Sift together the flour, salt, and baking powder. Work in the butter with the fingers and add the milk. Mix well. Turn onto floured board. Roll out one half inch thick. Cover with the apple and roll up like a jelly roll. Put the ends together and press down the side to keep the apple in. Place in a buttered pan and add the sugar butter, and water. Bake in a moderate oven for one and one-half hours. Baked Cherry Pudding Cream one quarter cup of butter with one half cup of sugar. Add the yolks of two eggs beaten very light, two cups of milk, two cups of flour sifted twice with four level teaspoons of baking powder, and last the whites of the eggs beaten stiff. Stone cherries, to measure three cups, drain off the juice and put them into a pudding dish. Baked Pudding Stir one-half cup of flour smooth in one cup of cold milk. Add two unbeaten eggs and beat several minutes. Then add one cup more of milk and a salt spoon of salt. Stir together, pour into a buttered baking dish, and set directly into the oven. Serve with lemon thickened sauce. Cocoa Rice Meringue Heat one pint of milk, 
add one quarter cup of washed rice and a salt spoon of salt. Cook until tender. Add one level tablespoon of butter, one half cup of seeded raisins, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and one slightly rounding tablespoon of cocoa. Cook five minutes. Fold in the stiffly beaten whites of two eggs and one half cup of beaten cream. Turn into a buttered baking dish. Cover with the whites of three eggs beaten stiff with one third cup of powdered sugar and a level tablespoon of cocoa. Set in a moderate oven for a few minutes until the meringue is cooked. Cottage Pudding Beat the yolk of one egg, add one cup of granulated sugar, one half cup of milk, one and one half cups of flour, and two spoons of baking powder. Stir in the white of one egg beaten stiff. Bake in a moderate oven. Cranberry and Custard Pudding Here is a new suggestion which comes from a high authority. Take one sugar cookie, or four lady fingers, if you have them, and crumble into a baking dish. Cover with a thin layer of cranberry preserves or jelly. Dot with small lumps of butter, and add a sprinkle of cinnamon. Beat three eggs separately, very lightly. Add two tablespoonfuls of sugar and two cupfuls of milk. Pour over the fruit and cake, bake as a custard, and served with whipped cream. Date Meringue Beat the whites of five eggs until stiff. Add three rounding tablespoons of powdered sugar and beat again. Add a teaspoon of lemon juice and a half a pound of stoned and chopped dates. Turn into a buttered baking dish and bake fifteen minutes in a moderate oven. Serve with a boiled custard. Egg Souffle Make a sauce from one cup of hot milk and two level tablespoons each of butter and flour. Cook together five minutes in a double boiler. Add the yolks of four eggs beaten well. Stir enough to mix well and remove from the fire. Add half a level teaspoon of salt and a few grains of cayenne. Fold in the whites of the eggs, beaten stiff, turn into a buttered dish, set in a pan of hot water, and bake in a slow oven until firm. Serve in the same dish. Fruit Pudding One and one-half cups flour, two and one-half cups raisins, one-half cup molasses, one-half cup milk, two tablespoons butter, one teaspoon cinnamon, one half teaspoon allspice, one half teaspoon nutmeg, one half teaspoon salt. Mix all together. One half teaspoon soda, dissolved in hot water. Steam two hours. Hard or liquid sauce, or both. Indian tapioca pudding. One third cup tapioca, one fourth cup cornmeal, one quart scalded milk. Half cup molasses, two tablespoons butter, one half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon ginger and cinnamon mixed, one cup cold milk. Soak the tapioca in cold water for one hour, then drain. Pour the hot milk onto the cornmeal gradually. Add the tapioca and cook in double boiler until transparent. Add molasses, butter, salt and spice, and turn into a buttered baking dish. Pour the cold milk over the top and bake for one hour in a moderate oven. Lemon Meringue Pudding Soak one cup of fine bread crumbs in two cups of milk until soft. Beat one quarter cup of butter and one half of sugar together until greasy. Stir all into the milk and crumbs. Grate a little yellow lemon peel over the top, and pour into a buttered baking dish. Set in a moderate oven until firm and slightly browned. Make a meringue of the stiffly beaten whites of two eggs, 
and four level tablespoons of powdered sugar. Spread over the pudding, return to the oven, and color a little. Lemon Pudding Three eggs, one scant cup sugar, one lemon juice and rind, two cups of milk, two liberal tablespoons cornstarch, one heaping teaspoon butter. Scald the milk and stir in the cornstarch, stirring all the time until it thickens well. Add the butter and set aside to cool. When cool, beat the eggs light. Add sugar, the lemon juice and grated rind, and whip in a great spoonful at a time, the stiffened cornstarch and milk. Bake in a buttered dish and eat cold. Little Steamed Pudding Cream one quarter cup butter with one half cup of sugar, add one quarter cup milk, then one cup of flour sifted with two teaspoons of baking powder and a pinch of salt, and last fold in the stiffly beaten whites of three eggs. Have some small molds or cups buttered. Fill half full with the batter, cover with buttered paper, and steam three-quarters of an hour. Serve hot with a sauce. New Hampshire Indian Meal Pudding Bring a quart of milk to a boil, then sprinkle in slowly about a cup and a quarter of yellow meal, stirring constantly. An exact rule for the meal cannot be given, as some swells more than others. As soon as the milk is thickened, take from the fire, and cool slightly before adding three-quarters of a cup of molasses, half a teaspoonful salt, and a tablespoonful ginger. Beat the mixture until smooth, and lastly, turn in a quart of cold milk, stirring very little. Pour into a well-greased pudding dish, and set in a very slow oven. This pudding needs about five hours of very slow baking to ensure it's becoming creamy instead of hard and lumpy. The batter, after the cold milk is added, should be about the consistency of pancake batter. Serve with cream or maple syrup. Orange Pudding Take one cup of fine stale bread crumbs, not dried, and moisten them with as much milk as they will absorb and become thoroughly softened. Beat the yolks of four eggs with the whites of two. Add four tablespoons of sugar and the grated peel of one orange, using, of course, only the outer cells. Stir this into the softened crumbs, then beat the other two whites until stiff and fold them into the mixture. Turn it into a well-buttered mold and steam it two hours. Turn out into a hot dish and serve with orange sauce. Peach Tapioca Prepare a dish of tapioca in the usual way. Into a buttered pudding dish, put a layer of cooked and sweetened tapioca, then a layer of peaches, fresh or canned. Next add another layer of tapioca, then more peaches, and so on, until the dish is full. Flavor with lemon, and sprinkle three-fourths of a cup of sugar over all. Then bake in a very hot oven until a light brown. Raspberry Dumplings Wash one cup of rice and put into the double boiler. Pour over it two cups of boiling water. Add one-half teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of sugar, and cook thirty minutes or until soft. Have some small pudding cloths about twelve inches square. Wring them out of hot water, and lay them over a small half-pint bowl. Spread the rice one-third of an inch thick over the cloth, and fill the center with fresh raspberries. Draw the cloth around until the rice covers the berries, and they are a good round shape. Tie the ends of the cloth firmly, drop them into boiling water, and cook twenty minutes. Remove the cloth, and serve with lemon sauce. Spoon Pudding Cream one tablespoonful butter with two tablespoonfuls sugar, two 
tablespoonfuls flour, pinch of salt, one tablespoonful cornstarch, beaten yolk of one egg, and tablespoonful of cream. Beat well, and lastly add beaten white of egg, and one teaspoonful baking powder. Pour over berries and steam forty minutes. Serve with whipped cream. Squash Pudding one pint of finely mashed cooked squash, one cup of sugar, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a little salt, the juice and grated rind of one lemon, add slowly one quart of boiling milk, stirring well, and when a little cooled, add five well-beaten eggs. Bake in a pudding dish, set in a pan of hot water, in a moderate oven, until firm in the center. Serve with cream. Steamed Berry Pudding Sift two cups of flour with four teaspoons of baking powder, rub in a rounding tablespoon of butter, add two beaten eggs, one cup of milk, one half cup of sugar, and last two cups of blueberries. The berries should be rinsed in cold water, shaken in a cheesecloth until dry, and then rolled in flour before adding. Pour into a pudding mold, and steam one and one quarter hours. Serve with liquid sauce. Steamed Pudding Beat one half cup of butter with one cup of sugar to a cream. Add two beaten eggs and cup of flour, sifted with one teaspoon each of cinnamon and soda two cups of bread crumbs, soaked in one cup of sour milk. Add one cup of chopped and seeded raisins, and one half cup of chopped dates. Steam two hours, and serve with whipped cream. Tapioca Meringue Soak one half cup granulated tapioca in a pint of cold water for half an hour. Cook slowly twenty minutes, until transparent. If too thick, add a little more boiling water. Boil one quart of milk in a farina kettle with a pinch of salt and the yellow rind of half lemon. Beat the yolks of four eggs with a cup of sugar. Add slowly to the milk, stirring until smooth and creamy, but do not allow it to boil. When thickened, remove from the fire, add a teaspoonful flavoring, and blend thoroughly. Whip the whites of the eggs to a stiff froth with three tablespoonfuls powdered sugar and a teaspoonful flavoring. Spread over the top of the pudding, which should have been poured in the serving dish and set in a coolish oven to puff and color a golden yellow. Tapioca Pudding Cover one cup of the flake tapioca with cold water and let it stand two hours. Stir occasionally with a fork to separate the lumps. Put in a farina kettle with a pint and a half water. Slice three tart apples and put it in with the tapioca, together with sugar to sweeten to taste. Stir all together and cook until the apples are soft and the tapioca clear. Serve hot or cold. Peaches may be used in place of the apple. Serve with cream. Tapioca souffle. Soak three tablespoonfuls pearl tapioca in water to cover for three or four hours. Then add a quart of milk and cook until the tapioca is perfectly clear and the milk thickened. It will take about twenty minutes, and unless you use the farina kettle, must be stirred constantly. Add the yolks of four eggs beaten with two-thirds cup sugar, and cook two or three minutes, stirring steadily. Whip the whites of four eggs to a stiff froth. Fold through the cooked cream, and take directly from the fire. Flavor with lemon or vanilla, and bake in a moderate oven for twenty-five minutes. Chill and serve. This may also be served as a pudding without the final baking. Whole wheat pudding. Put one cup of milk, 
one half cup of molasses, two cups of graham or whole wheat flour, one cup of chopped raisins, and half a salt spoon of salt, into a bowl, and add one level teaspoon of soda, dissolved in a tablespoon of warm water. Beat hard for three minutes. Pour the thin batter into a buttered pudding mold and steam two and a half hours. Serve with a lemon sauce or cream. Sauces for puddings. Fruit syrup sauce. One cup fruit syrup, one half cup sugar, one teaspoon butter. Use the syrup from apricots, peaches, cherries, quinces, or any fruit you prefer. The amount of sugar will depend upon the acidity of the fruit. Mix the cornstarch with the sugar, add the syrup, and boil all together five minutes. Add the butter last. Lemon Sauce Grate the rind and squeeze the juice of one lemon. Mix together three teaspoons cornstarch, one cup of sugar, and two cups of boiling water, and cook ten minutes, stirring constantly. Add the lemon rind and juice and one teaspoon of butter. Lemon Sauce Mix three dessert spoons of cornstarch with one cup of sugar, pinch of salt, in a saucepan. Pour on two cups boiling water and stir quickly as it thickens. When it is smooth, set it back where it will simply bubble and simmer, and stir occasionally. Add the grated rind and juice of one lemon, and one rounding tablespoon butter. If this is too thick, add more hot water as it thickens in cooling, and you want it thin enough to pour easily. Lemon Sauce Mix three tablespoons of cornstarch with one cup of cold water, and turn on one cup of boiling water. Boil ten minutes. Then add one cup of sugar, the juice and grated yellow rind of one lemon, and two rounding tablespoons of butter. Lemon Sauce for Fritters Mix four level teaspoons of cornstarch with one cup of sugar, and stir at once into two cups of boiling water. Add the juice and grated yellow rind of one lemon, and cook six minutes. Add three level tablespoons of butter. Orange Sauce Number 1 Mix one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch with one cup of sugar, and stir it into one pint of boiling water. Let it cook quickly, and stir as it thickens, and after ten minutes add two tablespoons of butter and one half cup of orange juice. Cook two minutes longer, then serve. Orange Sauce Number 2 Chip the yellow rind from an orange, and squeeze the juice over it. Let stand half an hour. Stir one quarter cup of flour into one cup of sugar, and turn into two cups of boiling water. Cook ten minutes, add a pinch of salt, the orange rind, and juice, stir, and strain. Raspberry Sauce for Ice Cream if you think that a good ice cream is not yet quite fine enough, pour a raspberry sauce over each portion as served. Add one quarter cup of sugar to one cup of raspberry juice, prepared as for jelly making, and simmer five minutes. Add a rounding teaspoon of arrowroot, made smooth, in one tablespoon of cold water, and cook five minutes. Now, Add one tablespoon of strained lemon juice, and let boil up once. Sauce for Cherry Pudding Pour two cups of cherry juice, or juice and water, into a saucepan. Stir in three level tablespoons of cornstarch, and cook fifteen minutes. Add two-thirds cup of sugar, and a tablespoon of lemon juice. Sauce for Batter Pudding Beat together in a bowl three rounding tablespoons of sugar, 
two level tablespoons of butter and one of flour. When the mixture is white, add one half cup of boiling water, and stir until all is well melted. Add a little lemon juice and serve. Sauce for puddings. Beat the whites of three eggs until stiff, add one half cup powdered sugar, and the grated yellow rind of half a lemon. Pour on slowly one cup of boiling water, stirring all the time, and the sauce is ready to serve. Strawberry Sauce Beat together one half cupful of butter and a cup of sugar until white and light. The success of this sauce depends upon the long beating. Add to the creamed butter and sugar the stiffly whipped white of an egg and a cupful of strawberries mashed to a pulp. Beverages Cocoa with whipped cream Heat four cups of milk to the scalding point over hot water, or in a double boiler. Milk should be heated by direct contact with the fire. Mix a few grains of salt, three level tablespoons of cocoa, and one-fourth cup of sugar to a paste with a little of the milk. Then add three-fourths cup of boiling water, and boil one minute. Add to the hot milk, and beat two minutes by the clock. Serve with a tablespoon of beaten or whipped cream on top of each cup. Currant Julep Pick over currants and measure two cups. Mash them and pour on two cups of cold water. Strain and chill the juice. Put one tablespoon of simple syrup in a tall glass. Add three bruised fresh mint leaves and fill with the currant juice. Add three or four perfect raspberries and serve. The syrup is made by simmering for twenty minutes, one cup of sugar and two of water. Currant Shrub Pick over and mash two quarts of ripe currants. Add one pint of vinegar and let stand overnight. Set on the range and bring to the boiling point then strain twice. Measure the clear liquid, and allow one cup of sugar to each cup of liquid. Simmer twenty minutes, and seal in bottles. Raspberry Shrub Put one quart of ripe raspberries in a bowl. Add two cups of vinegar. Mash the berries slightly, and let stand overnight. In the morning, scald and strain until clear. Measure, and to each cup of juice, add one cup of sugar. Boil twenty minutes, and seal. Strawberry Syrup Pick over, rinse, drain, and remove the hulls from several quarts of ripe berries. Fill a porcelain-lined double boiler with the fruit, and set it over the lower boiler, half full of boiling water, and let it heat until the juice flows freely. Mash the berries, then turn out into a cloth strainer, and cook the remainder of the fruit in the same way. When all the juice is pressed out, measure it, and allow an equal amount of sugar. Let the juice come to the boiling point. Add the sugar, and cook five minutes from the time the whole begins to boil. Turn into jars or bottles, and seal the same as canned fruit. This is excellent for beverages, flavoring ice cream, and other fancy creams, and will be found desirable for many purposes when fresh fruit is not at hand. End of section 20 and end of good things to eat as suggested by Rufus read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto California for LibriVox spring 2007